What's up, guys? Just about to repaste my GPU uh, core with liquid metal, and I just wanted to share some baseline testing. Uh, I've already rebuilt this GPU a few times, trying to optimize temps just for fun, uh, as, as an enthusiast, not, not because there was any problem at all. Uh, the temps are great, but one thing with the Gigabyte RX 5700 Gaming OC is that the backplate does not come with any pads on the VRM and the VRAM. And actually, you know, so I, I added pads and I figured out the reason why. And it's because you get heat transfer between the core and the VRAM, which can be detrimental to overall temps, depending on what your goal is. So basically what happened was I ended up getting a memory junction decrease uh, and a VRM decrease, but that directly increased the hotspot temp, which is on the core. And now, now my uh, hotspot to to edge temp delta, which is the normal you know GPU reading versus the hotspot. Now the delta is about 16 to 17 degrees under load. Uh, temps are still great. VRAM temps are great. Everything is fine. There's nothing wrong with the card. I just want to stress that. It's just I like to tweak and get things running, you know, to my preference. So if I see something, I can say, oh well, that could be better. Like those temps are great, but it could be even better. Uh, and it's not expensive to do, then, you know, it's just for fun. So I wanted to just share the testing and, you know, talk a little bit about the card. So I am running a slight undervolt. And because of, you know, Radeon drivers crashing at stock, because, you know, it actually overclocks my card beyond the advertised overclock. So this card is meant to have like an overclock around 2640 megahertz or something like that. And it defaults to like 2689 megahertz uh, on the stock settings. And what that'll do is it'll crash the card as the driver loads into Windows because even if you set an undervolt to stabilize it in a performance profile, like you set up an overclock profile, what'll happen is before that profile can load, the driver loads in with stock settings, which is unstable. And as soon as the driver crashes before it can load the performance tuning profile, it will say uh, Whatman has been reset. Like it'll actually prevent any tuning profile from loading at all. So I went through more power tool and custom set everything. So basically what you're seeing here, if I actually enable custom tuning and try to show you my, you know, voltage and speeds, it's not the defaults. It's 1163 MV, which is a slight undervolt, and 2600 megahertz on the frequency, which is a little bit lower than the normal boost frequencies. Um, but at least it's not, you know, it's stable. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. And then my RPM temp target is set to 58 degrees. And that is only because um, I noticed the fans always spin up late. And I don't know if it's like some kind of latency driver issue or if it's to do with even using external programs does not help because it conflicts with Radeon software. But basically when I try to set a curve and I, I'm aiming at keeping the junction temp down, they spin up late because it, see, it almost seems like the curve re either it reacts late or it's going off the edge temp. And so if your goal is to get better junction temps, you can't set a temp target based on the edge temp. you got to set a temp, I mean, based on the junction, you got to set it lower based on the core temperature, uh, the normal edge reading. And what that basically means is when I set more power tool up, I'll just give you a quick example. This is where you set, basically what your power tool is, it's uh, registry settings. And what that means is as soon as Windows loads, the driver detects what GPU settings to run and it defaults to all of these settings that I've set. So basically it'll default to having um, my frequency, you know, my voltage. That's why the driver's reading all of this is default. So it can't, it can't give me unstable settings this way. So anyway, uh, to do with the fan, you can set a uh, temperature target here and I've actually set it to 54 degrees. And all that does is it stops the card heating up and it tries to keep it cool in the first place under higher gaming loads rather than waiting for the hotspot to get to 80 degrees and the core is down at like 60, but the hotspot's already at 80 plus. And my goal is just good hotspot temps. So anyway, um, just to show you in here what I mean, like what I'm talking about. So I don't actually have to set any fan curves because it doesn't need it. And yeah, um, what I'm gonna do is my baseline test for this mod for adding liquid. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add liquid metal to the core to try to make the delta smaller. But this is going to be my baseline readings. But just to stress, this is not full stock. The card has already been torn down. I've added thinner thermal, higher quality thermal pads to the to the um, memory chips, and I added some cheap. It wasn't even good thermal pads, but I added some cheap. I think it was 2.5 millimeter pads between the backplate and 
the PCB, so on the rear of the VRAM. And um, yeah, just as I said, though, because I added thermal pads to the to the memory on the backplate, it ended up transferring heat over to the hotspot. So that's why that's what I'm trying to like. I want all of it improved. I don't just want one thing to be improved. So if the hotspot got worse, now I'm going to do liquid metal. So I'm going to share that whole process too. So if you're just like wondering if you should stick around and watch, I'm going to show the full teardown video and I'm going to be adding conformal coating, which is actually liquid electrical tape. And I found that that is the cheapest and easiest method to protect the SMDs around the core. And the reason I'll be using that is because when you look up what kind of coatings to use to protect the chips around the core, because you don't want the liquid metal to like, it's, it's, it's not really a high likelihood if, you, if it's applied properly. But on the slight off chance that it could, you know, leak off the, the die and somehow touch an SMD, uh, you want to have a coating on it. And all the Reddit posts are talking about putting uh, nail polish and things, but you need a special type of nail polish. And it's actually more expensive than liquid electrical tape from China for about two bucks. So I'm going to be sharing the product link and all that stuff so you guys can look for the same thing if you're thinking of replicating this on your own GPU because it's not model specific, obviously. The method is the same across all GPUs. So yeah, I've got hardware info running, and you can see the memory junction is great. The VRMs are improved, and it's really just a delta between the core and the hotspot on the GPU temp. Uh, I can't move my mouse, but below RX 6700 XT, it's got temp, and that's the edge temp versus the hotspot temp, and there is a 10, 10 degree plus delta, which is very good. I mean, there's people that have horrible temps out of the box, and my out-of-the-box temps running a good fan curve are pretty decent. But yeah. Anyway, we'll just get this root. Uh, it's just for the temp reading, so it's like the score is not going to be accurate because I'm using Relo. So you can see here we have 60 degrees on the edge temp, 77 on the hotspot, so 17 degree delta. And just so you're aware, these temps are very good because I am in a 31 degrees ambient room here in the Philippines. And so technically my temperature over ambient is just 47 degrees on the hotspot and uh, 40 degrees on the memory junction. So that's actually pretty good. When you look at Gamers Nexus testing, they, they tell you the temperature over ambient and they're testing at a much lower ambient temp, but the delta uh, or the temperature over ambient when you factor in the ambient temp is really pretty decent. So anyway, it's just for a matter of, you know, just showing if there's an improvement or not because I don't want to make things worse. And yeah, uh, we'll get to the teardown now.
sucks. Maybe it's expired. Conformal coating, a little bit did leak off. But that should be fine. When I tighten it down, that might also squeeze more of the compound, uh, the liquid metal out. So let's just hope that that doesn't make it run out the sides. in because it's not a standard reinstallation into the case. Uh, first I get this thermal pad and place it on the back plate of the GPU towards this edge because that's the only spot I can safely fit it. Um, and this goes here because, I'll just show you, because I've got this thing. Um, I've got this heat sink that I put on there. Basically this heat sink is a bit too wide that it'll or a bit too long that it'll hit the RAM so it has to be right up against the back of the PCIe bracket and it also has to be pulled out a bit because of the I.O. plate um, the the rear I.O. there's like a silver thing sticking out so anyway it's just for clearance that's why you can see it's only partially covering because it has to be about that far out and yeah I'll just show my show reinstalling it Thank <laughs> you. 